Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about something that many people struggle with when learning cybersecurity or hacking, and that is how to find the right information online. I did a quick Google search for learn cybersecurity. It gave me around 600 million results. But when I searched learn hacking, I got more than double that. That's crazy. There's so much information out there. It's easy to feel lost. Now here's the question. Are you just going to click the first few results and hope for the best? Or do you want to learn how to search smart and get the best answers faster? This video is here to help you with the second option, searching smart. Because if you know how to search, you'll learn faster, avoid bad sources, and grow your hacking skills much better. In this video, we'll focus on these important skills. Evaluate information sources, Use search engines efficiently. Explore specialized search engines. Read technical documentation. Make use of social media. Check news outlets. If you want to become a smart learner in cybersecurity, start with these simple skills. All right, now let's continue. First, we will talk about evaluation of search results. When you search on the internet, anyone can write and share their ideas. It could be blog posts, articles, or even social media posts. Sometimes people even edit public wiki pages. This means anyone can say anything even if it's not true or not checked carefully. So, as someone who wants to learn, it's our job to check if the information is good and trustworthy. Here are a few easy things to think about when you check information you find online. First, look at the source. Who wrote it or shared it? Are they experts or a good organization? Just because someone writes a blog doesn't mean they are an expert. Second, check the evidence and reasoning. Does the information have real facts and good explanations? We want real proof, not just opinions. Third, think about objectivity and bias. Is the information fair and balanced? Or does it seem like the writer is pushing an idea or trying to sell something? Last, look for corroboration and consistency. Do other trusted sources say the same thing? When many good sources agree, it's more likely to be true. By doing these simple checks, you can avoid wrong or fake information and learn better. Okay, now that we've talked about how to check if information is good or not, let's move on. Let's talk about how to actually search smarter, not just typing random words into Google, but using search engines in a powerful way. Most of us have used Google, Bing, or DuckDuckGo before, but here's the thing. Not everyone knows how to use the real power behind these search engines. They actually have special tools called search operators. These help you find exactly what you're looking for. Let's look at some of the most useful ones you can use on Google. The first one is double quotes. If you put your search words inside double quotes like this, passive reconnaissance, Google will only show you results that have that exact phrase just as you typed it. This is helpful when you want something specific and don't want Google to mix the words around. For example, if you search for cyber security tools, it will only show pages where those three words appear together in that exact order. Second site. This search trick lets you look inside one specific website. For example, if you want to find success stories on the website cybersecuritynews.com, you can type site semicolon cybersecuritynews.com. Success stories, this will show you only the pages from cybersecuritynews.com that talk about success stories. You can use this with any website. Just replace the domain with the one you want. It saves time and helps you focus your search. Minus sign. The minus sign helps you remove results you don't want. Let's say you're searching for information about pyramids, but you don't want results about tourism. You can search like this, pyramids minus tourism. This will show you pages about pyramids, but not the ones that mention tourism. You can also do minus tourism pyramids. Both work. This is great when a topic has a lot of unrelated results and you want to filter them out. If you want to find a specific type of file, like a PDF or PowerPoint presentation, you can use the file type operator. For example, to find a PowerPoint about cybersecurity, you can search file type PPT cybersecurity. This will show you PowerPoint presentations related to cybersecurity. You can replace PPT with other file types like PDF, DOC, or XLS depending on what kind of file you're looking for. It's really useful when you're searching for presentations, reports, or research papers. Now that we've talked about using Google Smarter, let's go one step further. Have you ever heard of specialized search engines? These are not for regular websites. They're made to help you search for specific things like devices, IP addresses, files, or even data breaches. Let's start with Shodan. Shodan is a search engine, but not for websites. It's for devices connected to the internet. You can use it to find things like servers, cameras, routers, or even smart fridges and IoT devices. 
Let's say you want to see how many servers are still running an old version of Apache, for example, Apache 2.4.1. You can search for Apache 2.4.1 and Shodan will show you a list of those servers, including where they are located in the world. You can also check the Shodan search query examples page to learn more cool search tricks. If you have a paid account, you can even check Shodan trends to see how things changed over time. Next is Census. It looks a bit like Shodan, but it works in a different way. While Shodan focuses on internet-connected devices, Census focuses more on hosts, websites, SSL certificates, and other internet assets. Some things you can do with Census include finding domains that are being used, checking open ports and services, finding unknown or hidden devices on a network. It's especially useful for companies that want to find all the devices they own connected to the internet. You can also look at the Census Use Cases page to learn more. Now let's talk about VirusTotal. VirusTotal is a website where you can upload a file or paste a URL and it will scan it using many antivirus engines at the same time, sometimes over 60 different tools. You can also search for a file hash like a SHA-256 to check if someone else already scanned the same file. Sometimes a file is marked as a virus or trojan, but it might not really be dangerous. That's when the community comments can help you understand more. So this tool is great for checking suspicious files or links before opening them. Lastly, we have Have I Been Puned or HIBP. This tool tells you if your email address has been part of a data breach. If your email shows up in a leak, that means your personal info, and maybe even your password, was exposed. Now, most websites encrypt passwords, but if the password is weak, hackers can still crack it. And if you reuse the same password on different sites, one leak could put all your accounts at risk. So, always check your email on HIBP and use strong, unique passwords. These specialized tools are powerful and made for people who want to go deeper into cybersecurity. They help you find more targeted and useful information than regular search engines. Now, let's move on to another important topic, vulnerabilities and exploits. This is where cybersecurity gets more serious and more technical, but don't worry, I'll explain it step by step. Let's start with something called CVE, which stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. You can think of CVE as a big dictionary of known security problems found in software or hardware, like Windows, browsers, servers, and more. Each problem gets a special ID. For example, CVE 2024-29988. This is like a unique name for that one security bug. It helps everyone from IT professionals to researchers, talk about the same exact vulnerability without confusion. The CVE system is managed by an organization called MITRE. You can search for these IDs and learn more on the CVE program website, or you can go to the National Vulnerability Database NVD for more detailed information. One famous example is CVE 2014-0160, which is known as the Heartbleed Bug. It was a huge issue in the past that affected many websites. Let's talk about Exploit Database now. Why would someone want to exploit a vulnerability? Well, in ethical hacking or red teaming, your job might be to test a company's systems, but only with legal permission. You should never try to attack systems without clear, written approval. If you do have permission, you may need to find a working exploit code to test the vulnerability. That's where the exploit database comes in. This is a website that lists many different exploit codes written by different people. Some of them are marked as verified, which means they have been tested and confirmed to work. For example, if you search for Heartbleed on the exploit database, you'll find several codes that show how attackers could use that vulnerability. Another great place to find exploit tools, proof of concepts, called POCS, and scripts related to CVES is GitHub. GitHub is a platform for developers to share code. Many researchers upload their tools and POSI exploits there. If you search for Heartbleed on GitHub, you'll see many different tools made to test or demonstrate that vulnerability. Now let's talk about something that many beginners ignore, but it's actually very helpful, reading technical documentation. Linux manual pages, man pages. Before the internet was everywhere, how did people learn Linux commands? The answer, Manual pages, also called man pages. Every command on Linux and Unix-like systems has a man page. These pages give you details about what the command does, how to use it, and what each option means. For example, if you want to learn about the IP command, just open your terminal and type man IP. This will show the manual for the IP command. To close the page, just press the Q key. If you don't want to use the terminal, no problem. You can search for man IP in Google, and you'll usually find the online version at the top.
Microsoft Windows Documentation If you're using Windows, Microsoft has its own official technical documentation website. Let's say you want to learn about the command IP config. You can just go to Microsoft's documentation site and search for it. It will show you what the command does, how to use it, and what the options mean, just like a man page in Linux. Let's now talk about a powerful tool that many people overlook in cybersecurity, social media. Platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, X, are not just for chatting with friends. They can help you connect with cybersecurity experts, follow companies, and stay updated with the latest tools, trends, and attacks. If there's a platform you're not familiar with, explore it. But if you don't want to use your real email, try using a temporary email. This way, you can check it out without linking it to your personal account. And once you're done, you can delete both the account and the temporary email. Social media is also useful for searching people. And this can be a double-edged sword. For example, if someone shares too much online, like the name of their first pet or old school, an attacker might use that to answer security questions and reset their password. As a cybersecurity professional, you should know how to spot these risks. Besides social media, don't forget about cybersecurity news websites. There are many great ones that cover the latest attacks, vulnerabilities, and tools. Try a few and stick with the ones you like best. It's one of the easiest ways to keep your knowledge sharp and current.